Hey, welcome back to another Three Minute Thursday. I had a great time on holidays in the Netherlands. Beautiful country, nice people, good food. One of the things I did when I was in the Netherlands was an OSINT challenge. I'll put a link to the first one below and then you can go through my profile if you want to find the rest of them. In most of these challenges, I was asking people to geolocate me on a map. And if the only tool at your disposal is Google Maps or Apple Maps or something like that, you're a little bit limited. So in this video, I'd like to show you a couple of other tools that are incredibly useful when doing geolocation. As always, three minutes on the clock and let's go. So this is Google Maps. It's absolutely fine. We're all used to using it. And as you know, you can click the layers button in the bottom left and you can see satellite view. And if you hold a button on your keyboard, I'm on a Mac, so I'm holding the command key and I drag around, it goes into this crazy 3D view. This map data, you might struggle to read it, is from 2023. And because we're looking at a shipyard, ships move, that's problematic. But for most things, Google Maps, absolutely fine. You can even see on here, they show all of the ferry routes between different cities. So Santander in Spain to Portsmouth, Portsmouth to Bilbao in Spain, etc. So that's handy. Let's look at this though. This is the same location. This is Portsmouth Naval Base, a place where I spent a lot of time back in the day. And already it looks a little bit different. You can start to see the outlines of things and they've added some names. And if we just zoom in here a second and click on any of these highlighted elements, you'll see a panel flies in on the left. So if I click on HMS Illustrious, we get this entry for HMS Illustrious, including a few pictures and a bit of a description. There's a link to the Wikipedia article and also a link to this maritimequest.com website. So that's really cool. You can visually move around on a map and click on things and just see what they are, broad strokes. Sometimes you get great big descriptions like this. Other times you get little small descriptions like this. And Wikimapia, it's a really good way of revealing things that you just might not see on Google Maps. If I go back to Google Maps and zoom in, obviously we don't see the ships here because that would be silly. Those ships probably aren't there at this point in time. But if we zoom in and just move around, none of these boxes really become named or labeled. Even if I flick into this mode, nothing really gets named or labeled. If I go into terrain mode, nothing gets named. You're just seeing the terrain. So Wikimapia lets you see things that you just can't see on Google Maps. If we click on Wikimapia map in the top right hand corner, you can change the view. So this is Bing satellite view. As you can see, the boxes don't line up with things anymore because when this picture was taken, there was no Type 23 frigate positioned here or a Type 45 destroyer or HMS Illustrious. But there's a second tool I'm gonna to show you and it gives you a whole different view of the world around you. And it's really, really fun, especially to check out like your local area where you live, for example. And it's called the Open Infrastructure Map. This is built on top of OpenStreetMaps mapping data, and you just get to see all of the infrastructure around you. So here's the same view again. It looks kind of flat and boring. We can see buildings, sure. But what really pops out here is things like this building. So that is a substation. And if I click on it, you can see it here in OpenStreetMap. It's on Fountain Road and it's the second building there. If I go back to Google Maps, it's this thing, which does actually look like a power substation. So that's what that is. If we come down here, we get another substation. Let's just check that out. Come down the road a little bit. There it is just here underneath my mouse. And let's zoom out again. This is solar panels. This is what they look like on OpenStreetMap. It's photovoltaic solar panels. And if we click on that, it opens it up in its own view. But if we open up Google Maps and zoom back out a little bit, there it is. You can see it here. And if we flick back, you can see it's almost perfect. Look, you got three, then four, and then four rows of five. Back to here, three, 
then four, and then four rows of five. The only thing it missed was those little ones just in there. That's what it missed, but not bad. So let's zoom out and you can see the whole world just comes to life. If we go in on London, for example, you can see all of these different substations positioned all over London. I think if we go and look at Amsterdam very quickly, you'll be not very surprised to find loads of big wind farms. Look, here they are. This is a offshore wind farm that generates 108 megawatts, apparently. On the right hand side of the open infrastructure map, you've got this little series of boxes. If you hover over that, you can then click to turn these things off and you just get left with the bare basics. So if you just want to see oil and gas, here we go. These are all the oil and gas lines running around the world. Really cool tool. I recommend you go and check both of those tools out, especially around your local area, so you can see just what's in the world around you that you've never noticed before. It's incredible. As in most things these days, the data within these tools is a little bit crowdsourced and it relies on people keeping things up to date and accurate. So always check the dates that things were submitted and last edited before you actually use it for anything. And if you can get other information from other providers that cross references and confirms what you see on the screen. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week. Peace.